good if he's not careful. Big, big mistake very early on then for Jorge Lorenzo. Zarco's going to lead the Qatar Grand Prix up the inside of Andre Yunani. The rookie leads. Oh, and a little bit of a bang and a crust there between Andre Yunani and Mark Marquez. But you cannot believe it. Johan Zarco on his MotoGP debut, the 26-year-old Frenchman, leads the way from the world champion, Marc Marquez. Two world champions lead the way. Well, this wasn't in the script, was it? No jump start, so Andre Unoni got the absolute perfect launch off the line. Brilliant start for the factory Suzuki rider. There's Rossi through turn 11, trailed by Alvaro, Alvaro Bautista. Bautista up the inside of Rossi, he is. You know, he all over the rear wheel of a Mark Marquez. This is absolutely extraordinary. We ride with you know, that's Mark Marquez in front of him. The man in front of them is making his MotoGP debut and he leads the way. Johan Zarco leads the way as they come down towards turn 16 for the first time. It's the Honda of Mark Marquez and the Suzuki of Andre Iannone. And Zarco is pulling away at the front. This is brilliant stuff from Johan Zarco. Lorenzo's mistake was a massive one. He drops it back to 16th place. Iannone can't slipstream Marquez down on the run to the first corner. Davizioso fourth, Vignal is fifth, Pedrosa sixth, Valentino Rossi in seventh. Then it's Bautista, Reading and Miller's your top ten. Looked like Alex Rins was out a little bit wide at the first corner as well. He was in 12th place. That might have cost him a couple of places, but it's still, believe it or not, Johan Zarco that leads the opening round of the season. Yeah, Maverick Vinal is not the start that he wanted, but he's in there. The pack as Marquez and you know, he hunt down as Zarco at the front. It's a, well, well over 18 and a half laps to go, don't forget the race has been reduced by two laps. Perhaps, perhaps Johan Zarco knows something about the weather we don't, yeah. and with that softer ups in rear, he's pushing, you know, he might be pushing like it's qualifying, thinking, do you know what, if in four or five laps time this race is stopped because of rain, he could potentially win it. Yeah, he's got nothing to lose, as he did, and nobody expects him to win the race, nobody expects him to be leading the Grand Prix. There he is at the front of the field, ahead of the likes of Marc Marquez, Andre Iannone, Danny Pedrosa, Andre Di Vizioso. Mixed fortunes for the Monster Yamaha Tech 3 team. Jonas Folger started 8th, he's plummeted back down the field to 18th. His teammate, though, unbelievably, is leading the opening Grand Prix. And he still leads away, as you know, and he closes up on Marquez. Zarco never won a race here. Best result, 6th place in the 125cc class. Hervé Poncheral, team manager, just cannot believe it, but they're closing the gap at the front, as one would expect. This is where the problems were on those cycling laps. You know, come round to the left-hander at turn 15. You know, only second up the inside of Marquez at turn 15. Beautifully picked the pocket of Marquez there, did the Italian. Johan Zarco, how much longer can he get good tie life out of that soft option rear tie? Marquez fights back up the inside of Yanoni at the final corner. I think Yanoni might have gone in a little bit deep, and look at the power of the Ducati. Davizioso is about to blitz by both of them. Wow, well, that just shows how quick the Ducati is, but Marquez just about holds firm as they break into turn one. Rossi has just taken sixth place from Danny Pedrosa, and Rossi's the quickest man on track. Valentino Rossi, a 156.5. Rossi on the charge. Pedrosa, though, sucking back at the first corner. Rossi and Pedrosa at it. Remember the race at Mizano last year. Lorenzo dropped back to 16th. He's made no impression whatsoever. He's still in 16th, trying to find a way through on Alessio Spargo. He's got Jonas Folger right behind him. Rossi not able to fend off Alvaro Bautista, who's hanging in there on those soft combination front and rear tyres. Can Rossi attack Pedrosa at turn six? Yes, he can. He runs wide again, though. Pedrosa sweeps straight back through. Back at the front, Zarco still leads the way. Marquez, Iannone, De Vizioso. What a battle between Danny Pedrosa. There's been a few of them with Valentino Rossi. Alvaro Bautista, so impressive in testing on his return to the Aspar camp, riding the GP16 machine, trying to hang in there. Zarco's holding firm at yep. the moment. He looks like a seasoned campaigner in MotoGP there at the front of this race, not a rookie. He is a double Moto2 world champion, of course, one of the best ever riders to emerge out of France, and he's doing an absolutely rousing job here at the front. Marc Marquez cannot get close enough as yet, 18 laps to go to take the lead. He closes up on Zarco. 
Well, it's been an extraordinary evening with all the delays, but it's well worth the wait and the biggest surprise of them all. From the second row of the grid, Johan Zarco leads the way as he comes into turn 16. There is Giannone. He will probably get absolutely blasted by his former teammate, Andrea De Vizioso, as they come down this back straight together, over 1,000 metres long. They cross the line now, 17 laps to go. De Vizioso has got past Giannone and closes up on Mark Marquez into turn one. Marquez has now set the fastest lap of the race. This could go absolutely anyway. Don't rule out a Maverick Vinales. Don't rule out Andrea De Vizioso and Rossi Pedrosa are having their own little personal fight. Yeah, Rossi, I think, finally found a way through on Pedrosa and he needed to because that top five was starting to break away. Rossi knew that he had to break through on Pedrosa, otherwise his podium hopes will be fading pretty fast. There's Maverick Vinales now piling the pressure on Andre Iannone. Vinales in fourth place. The gap between Vinales and Rossi, fifth and sixth, is a second. Rossi had to get through on Pedrosa. He timed that to perfection because this top five, we're going to start breaking away from him. Well, Vinales, we know in the past, is not the best of starters. And he gets just stronger and stronger as the race goes on. And he hasn't been dropped by anybody. There he is behind Andre Iannone. Uh, I think the worry is for Valentino Rossi and Danny Pedrosa. Uh, as Matt says, there is a little bit of a gap there. Do you think these leading men are quite happy for Johan Zarco to lead the way at the moment? Well, what they'll be curious to see is how long he can keep good grip in that soft option rear tyre. This electric pace is running at the front. Is he burning up that soft option Michelin rear? We know the whole way This is, sorry, Johan Zarco, it's completely new territory for him. He's never started a MotoGP race, let alone led one. And here he is at the front. He won't know about tyre management. He won't know about the fuel load, how the bike performs when the fuel load lightens. It's completely breaking new ground here for Johan Zarco. But so far, he's been absolutely imperious. He hasn't made one mistake. This is Giannone fighting it out with his former teammate at Ducati, Andrea De Vizioso. Both of them bringing success to Ducati last year. There is absolutely no sign of a problem at the moment for Johan Zarco. Even if it comes and he doesn't win the race, he has stamped his authority on MotoGP. He's pulling away. They can't live with him at the moment because of the grip he's got from that soft rear tyre. Looks like Valentino Rossi. Carl Crutchlow's crashed. That looks like it's at the final corner, so it's a nightmare start at the 2017 for Carl Crutchlow. That is at turn 16. Valentino Rossi's uh, rear facing onboard camera looks like it's come away, so I don't know whether he's had a bit of contact finding his way through the pack. What we can see is that Matt Vinales cannot go with his top four. Vinales has lost over a second to Andre, you know, and he's dropped right back into the clutches of his teammate. Valentino Rossi, Bautista's on the charge as well. He's taken Pedrosa for seventh place. He too, of course, is on those soft front and soft rear. Zarco's advantage at the front. Yes, Johan Zarco's advantage at the front is almost one second over Mark Marquez. A truly extraordinary ride by the double Moto2 world champion, the 26-year-old Frenchman making his MotoGP debut on a satellite machine. Crutchlow has rejoined the race, but he will, of course, be dead last. Exhibition stuff so far from Johan Zarco, who is now over a second clear of Marc Marquez in second place. For the first time in this race, he leads by a second. It's going to be about time management, still a long, long way to go, 16 laps. How much is he abusing that soft option rear tyre? We know he will have great grip in the early part of this race, but it's the riders behind him with the medium tyre, which should have the better range joints. You can see there the, uh, the rear-facing onboard camera dangling down from the back of Valentino Rossi's factory Yamaha. And he's closed right up on Maverick Vinales. Hector Barber is in there as well. He won. 15 laps to go, they are telling Johan Zarco. He said, I'm going to wake up now, I've been, I've been in a dream. Last time around again, though, he was six tenths quicker than Marquez, and Marquez now has lost second place to Andre De Vizioso, so De Vizioso's picked up the challenge being laid down here by Zarco. Yeah, Zarco to Marquez, six tenths was the gap. 1.1 seconds, he is clear now. What has Andre De Vizioso got for the Frenchman? I think he's got something for him as we ride with Andre De Vizioso, second here for the last two years. We switch back to Mark Marquez now in third place. So they have a turn four under the floodlights here at the LaSalle International Circuit. 
Sarko needs these three, Nick, to get into a bit of a carve up Davizioso, Marquez and Yoni, because it will just give him another opportunity to put more distance between himself and this chasing trio. Well, this is the battle for second place. There he is, Davizioso, Marquez and Yanoni. What about this tyre selection, Dylan? Nobody knows if it's going to last, do they? Well, they, they don't, but, but you know what? This is, this is the first time we're kind of running in these cooler conditions. You can already feel the humidity coming down, so, you know, you might even find that, uh, that maybe it's not quite wearing down quite as quickly as they would have seen during some of the practices. Uh, but look, yes, with 15 laps to go, you would expect it to have dropped off. What I find very interesting is I'd like to know whether Dobby really is going as hard as he could because he's got that soft, and I mean, he knows he has to conserve it with all that horsepower that the Ducati has. So you wonder whether he's thinking, OK, whatever Johan does, I can't control. But if he can maybe slow down Marquez Iannone, that those guys, a bit like Ducati did in uh, Austria last year, that might leave him a little bit more soft for the end, and that might be the key. Cal Crutchlow has crashed out for the second time, this time at turn 13. Talk about a nightmare night race for Cal Crutchlow. 1.7 seconds separate them as they come down the start and finish straight. What will it be at the end of this 1,000 metres? Oh, he's only pulled back a tenth of a second as you know he closes up on market. Yeah, Davizioso... is out of this, isn't he? Vinales cannot run this pace with him. Well, he's just at his best lap of the race. Oh, Sarko's gone down at turn two. Well, the dream is over. The fairy tale for the Frenchman has gone. He's crashed out at the second corner while leading his MotoGP debut. What a shame for Zarco. He was riding an absolutely brilliant race to that point. Ah, oh, the fairy tale turns into a nightmare. Turn two for Zarco. Yeah, tips it in. Now you just wonder whether that's perhaps uh, the humidity playing a big part. You're a long time coming into that turn two before you've been on the left-hand side of that front tyre, and the moment that he touched the front brake, down he went. Cruel, cruel luck for Johan Zarco, because he was on course for what would have been a quite remarkable victory. What it means is Andrea Davizioso now leads the Qatar Grand Prix from Marc Marquez and Andrea Iannone, and coming back into victory contention all of a sudden are the likes of Vinales and Rossi. They are, they are. I'd spoken far too soon. Vizioso with that softer option rear tyre. We saw what happened to Zarco. What a debut by the Frenchman. Vizioso has never won here in Qatar. Marquez has won in both of the Moto2 and Moto GP classes. Andrea only has won in the 125cc class. Well, we had to wait a long time, and I meant not the four months between November and the end of March, but for the start of the race, it all started an hour later than planned because of the weather, but it's been well worth the wait. Well, it was good while it lasted, wasn't it, for Johan Zarco? Had he finished the race on the podium, he would have been the first Frenchman in the Premier Class since Randy de Punio at Donington Park in 2009. Had he gone on to complete a quite remarkable win, he'd have been France's first Premier Class winner since Regis Laconi in Valencia back in 1999. Grateful to our co-commentator Steve Day for some of those uh, stats. This is uh, Vinales and Rossi. Let's have a look at the start. You know, he made an absolute Brilliant. blistering start. Yeah, Zarco did as well. He uh, nudged out Scott Redding as well, Zarco. Scott Redding dropped back through the field thanks to a bit of aggression from Zarco. This is Valentino Rossi starting from the fourth row of the grid. Folger got a shocker. Oh, absolute nightmare start for Jonas Folger, as you saw. Yeah, Andre Iannone will not judge the likes better than what he did. Ooh, that's why Valentino Rossi's rear-facing camera's been damaged, because it looked like he got a whack from one of the Planet Ducatis. In turn one? Yeah, massive whack. There you can see Zarco really squeezed Scott Redding out onto the dirty part of the track. That would have cost Redding loads and loads of momentum. Who nudged Was it Lorenzo on Rossi, or was it De Vizioso? It's definitely a red and white bike. I think that's De Vizioso, isn't it? Oh. I was telling you, it was definitely contact. Here is Johan Zarco, yeah, just explaining what happened. But what a debut ride by him. Just quickly run through the field for you. De Vizioso, Marcos, Giannone, 
Vignales four, Rossi five, Batista six, Pedrosa seven, Jack Miller in eighth place, Scott Redding nine, Alex wins ten, Alexis Pargo eleven, Jorge Lorenzo has come up into 12, Flores past 13, Petrucci 14, Folger uh, 15, 16 is Abraham, the back 17, 18. Somebody's Parker. down, sorry Nick, somebody's down at the final corner, I think it was Alvaro Bautista, he was in a brilliant sixth place, I'm pretty sure he's gone down at the final corner yet, can't see him there, Bautista's gone down, so, Interestingly, a couple of rides on the soft rear tyre have crashed. Yeah, Bautista has gone down. You're only second. Yeah, you're only up in the second line. to right. Quickly run through those just going out of the line. Rider OK, we're being told. So Alvaro Bautista now out of it. 18th place is uh, Polo Spargo. 19th place, Bradley Smith. 20th is Sam Lowe's. Do you know who's getting into his rhythm, who's right in the groove, That's he's found his stride, it's Maverick Vinales, he's coming, he's and just... And Rossi's coming with yeah. him. Vinales just put in his personal best lap of the race, a 1.56.3, that was half a second quicker than the race leader, Andrea De Vizioso. So, Marquez is fighting back against Andrea Iannone. Now, these two, when they want to get the gloves off, it will get feisty, it will get aggressive. And we'll suit Andrea De Vizioso <laughs> it will. to get away at the front. And Maverick Vinales has got a front yeah, row seat. Here we go. Oh, that was tight, you know. Nick. Guys, very, very quickly, quick way with Hervé Poncherel. Uh, Hervé, a real shame about Johan. He looked so, so good. First of all, is he OK? Yes, perfectly OK. He's really pissed off with himself because he said I uh, didn't crash the whole winter. And that lap, I started to say I have to calm down to get a bit more quiet i was not pushing but you know this turn two is always the killer here and he went that you know a bit outside of the line and he just lost the front and uh, he's really pissed off with himself because he was not pushing okay. I, I can't believe but this is the truth this is what he said okay, thank you very much Harvey. yeah you can surmise all day long, I really don't know what's going to happen. This is really helping Andre De Vizioso and Maverick Vinales and Valentino Rossi because they are closing up all the time on this pair and De Vizioso is getting further and further away at the front. It's interesting stuff, look at that, Yanoni Vinales. Just about two tenths of a second now. Marquez and Yanoni almost side by side. So they race down well over 200 miles an hour into turn one. Here comes Yanoni up the inside. He's not going to get through this time round. Marquez keeps it in second place. 11 laps ago, we waited a long time. We haven't been let down, have we? Where was Andre? You know, he found this kind of form from. He was 17th in FP3 before he fired himself onto the front row of the grid. He's been lost throughout winter testing with no front end filling on the Suzuki. He had four crashes at the test here just two weeks ago. And here he is, dicing for the podium with the reigning world champion, Mark Marquez. But he's got a real serious company now. Maverick Vinales is right on the rear wheel of the bike he vacated last year for Andre. You know, he's looking real menacing now. Here's Vinales. It's dragging Rossi into contention as well. But while Marquez and you know, he just can't each other up a little bit. Andrea De Vizioso doing a great job so far of nursing that soft option rear tyre. And he's just eking away another couple of tenths. De Vizioso leads by almost a second for the first time in this Grand Prix. Yeah, and probably the two most difficult pe people to overtake in Grand Prix racing. Mark Marquez and Andrea Iannone. They are not going to make life easy for Maverick Vinales on the charge or not. And Valentino just hovers in the background, Valentino Rossi. I feel so sorry for Johan Zarco. It's been a rough night for Cal Crutchlow, and that's an understatement. Two crashes for him. This was the second one. That was because of the first one. I think there's some kind of mechanical with that bike there. I'm not quite sure whether he had a brake problem, but whatever happens, a night to forget for Cal Crutchlow. Poor old Johan Zarco, though. He just strayed offline by a fraction. And we know if you stray offline on this dirty surface here in Qatar, well, you can pay a big penalty. Not sure the punishment fitted the crime, really, but great debut ever for Zarco. This is the battle for second place, you know.